Good morning. I haven't been to the track in a while, so I wanted to get out to the track today. I had a terrible sleep last night, and I have a cold, so I'm not expecting uh, my best performance today. But at least it's not freezing. Uh, the last time I made one of these videos, it was during the winter. Uh, so, uh, taking out a couple shoes today. Right now I'm wearing the uh, Saucony Endorphin Speed 3. Uh, then I'm going to switch to the Puma DV8 Nitro 2. Uh, then I'm going to switch to the New Balance Rebel V3. And I'm going to close with the Hoka Mach 5. So I had uh, kind of teased before doing a video comparing these four shoes. So these are four daily trainers that can also be used as a tempo shoe. Two of them have plates, two don't. I've run a lot of miles in both of them, in all of them on the road. Uh, so I'm taking them to the track for the first time today. And I'm gonna do some mile repeats and see how these shoes perform against each other. One mile warm up done in the Speed 3s. Uh, initial feelings on these are what they've been for me all along. It's a comfortable shoe, a little bit soft, a little bit of bounce from it, but I really do not feel the plate in this shoe. It, it has a nylon plate in there. The Speed 1 was really a speed shoe to me. This to me is more of like a comfortable cruiser. The upper is not as tight as well. It's got a lot more volume in the forefoot, which would be useful if you have a wider foot, but I'd say I have a normal volume to maybe even a little bit of a narrow foot. So I just swim a little bit in this upper. Um, so it's just not as finely tuned for me for speed. Uh, so I'm gonna do a mile in these. Um, I'm expecting a sub seven, but not by a lot. <laughs> we'll see how it goes. And then we're gonna compare them to the other shoes. One mile down in the speed three did that in around uh, 628 so a little better than I thought um, but still have a similar experience with this shoe it's smooth it's comfortable it's stable a little bit of sink in with some bounce uh, not too soft but it to me it just lacks that toe off it doesn't have the stiffness in the shoe that you really need to push it to go fast so I feel like at the end of my stride it just kind of dies it doesn't give me that explosive toe off so uh, decent performance, but I think this shoe for me really is best for long runs and easier efforts more than tempo efforts. Uh, so gonna switch now to the DV8 Nitro 2. I immediately like the fit of the Puma shoe better. Uh, you can see if you have a wider foot, there's a lot more volume in the Speed 3. The Puma shoe is a lot more narrow in the toe box and the instep, but that actually fits my foot a lot better. So this shoe has much more of a racing fit to me. Six eleven in the DV8 Nitro 2 and I'm realizing that I should have brought some water with me oh well I did uh, eat some toast with peanut butter before I came and had some electrolyte drink so I topped off before this run today about an hour before I started but uh, DV8 Nitro 2 so much more of a speedy shoe than the Speed 3 uh, immediately you feel that stiffness of the plate in there much more the upper just hugs my foot and it just wants to go fast. I feel like with the Speed 3, the rocker almost ends when you get to your midfoot. It goes to your midfoot to the ball of your foot and then it kind of moves on to your next stride without securing that really strong toe off. Whereas this shoe, you land on your the ball of your foot 
and the foam kind of sinks in a little bit. It feels like more like Light Strike Pro to me, the Adidas foam, which is a little bit firmer, which I like more because it doesn't sink in as much. So you get a little bit of compression, but the shoe feels really responsive. And the toe off, when you get to that plate, it feels like it's propelling you forward as opposed to the Speed 3 is kind of propelling you upwards. It's not really giving you that forward momentum where this shoe really kind of helps you stride out and move faster through your stride so definitely felt faster and more responsive than the speed three and that was also proven uh, with the time uh, now it's gonna get a little bit tougher because uh, now we're on the back end of this I have the lightest two shoes remaining uh, but they don't have plates so I'm not getting any assistance from that uh, so we'll see how I do on in those on more tired legs I feel like I just opened a box of crayons a lot of bright shoes out here today uh, you can see with the Rebel V3, again, a little bit more of a wider forefoot, a little bit more accommodating in the upper. I'd put this one in the Speed as having the more uh, wider upper, and the Puma and the Hoka that's coming next have more of that tighter fit around your foot. This one has the really soft uh, fuel cell foam that New Balance uses in their shoes, and it does not have a plate. So I'm expecting these to feel light and nimble and bouncy, but we'll see how they compare to the DV8 Nitro 2 when I'm trying to run fast in them. It's 631 in the Rebel V3, so I was actually slower uh, than the Saucony in these, uh, but I'm gonna owe that up to fatigue at this point. Uh, these definitely felt faster when I first started. Um, I can feel the lightness of the shoe and the bounciness of the foam. So the first 800 meters felt great, but then on the back end of that, the last 800 meters, uh, that's where I was missing the assistance. <laughs> missing the assistance of uh, the plate in the shoe. On the back 800, I could really feel the fatigue setting in and the shoe's not giving me anything back. So it remains lit, light and bouncy, but when you're getting a little bit tired, having that assistance of the plate definitely helps. The last shoe in this test is the Hoka Mach 5, which is also a lightweight shoe, has a dual density midsole. The bottom of the midsole is a little bit stiffer, so it does feel a little bit more springy than the Rebel. So we'll see how that does on the last rep, but I am getting pretty tired and sweaty at this point. <laughs> So the tour of the crayon box continues. Now we have a bright orange added to the mix, but just wanted to show this again. The Hoka shoe, the midsole goes back to that more narrow fit. So the New Balance and the Saucony definitely have a wider toe box, and the Hoka and the Puma are much more on the narrow side. So 638 in the Mach 5, which was my slowest time. But in fairness to the Mach 5, I was pretty tired in that last rep. I did not have it at all. Maybe the first 400 meters felt good. And then I just felt tired after that. So I gave it what I had left. So in fairness to the Hoka, if those were to have gone sooner in today's test, they would have done better. But the one that really stood out was the DV8 Nitro 2. And it makes some argument towards the benefits of a plated shoe. That was the only shoe with a plate that I could actually feel today, and I got the fastest time in it. It was my second, well really third rep. I had the warm up, the one mile in the Speed 3, and then the Puma, so I was warmed up, felt strong, and that plate really helped me uh, to push hard in that rep. Uh, with the Hoka's, they feel wider and more stable than the Rebel. You also feel like they're a little bit more propulsive because that bottom layer of foam that's a little bit firmer does give you a little bit more of a snappy toe off than the foam that's in the New Balance shoe. The New Balance shoe does feel a little bit lighter 
and uh, more nimble though. If I was gonna do like quick repeats, like 400 to 800 meters, I feel like I'd be faster in the Rebel than in the Hoka shoe. But if I was gonna run like a 5K in one of those two shoes, I think I'd go for the Hoka because it's gonna be more propulsive for a longer period of time. Uh, so when I get back home, I'll do kind of more of a breakdown, uh, but that's what we have for now. Gonna go drink a protein shake and take a shower. Hello again, I'm currently taking part in the Long Island State Park Summer Run Series. Uh, so the shirt for this is very bright and kind of matches all the bright shoes behind me. So I thought for continuity, I'd wear the bright shirt with the bright shoes. Uh, but this uh, Summer Run Series takes place in different parks on Long Island of all different distance of races. There's uh, five mile races, 5Ks, 10Ks, uh, one mile races. There's even a 4K in there, which I've never seen before other than in TVs. I'm like, 4K is a strange distance for a race. Uh, but those are some races that I'll be using a lot of my uh, race shoes in over the summer and uh, working on some speed work uh, this summer until I get back into a marathon training block. I'm doing a marathon October 22nd uh, in New York. So I'll be preparing for that probably starting in August. I did a review like this in the past for some of my racing shoes where I took them to the track and did one mile repeats. And uh, some people got mad at me saying, those are road shoes, you shouldn't use them on the track. Well, I use them on the road too, people. This is just uh, for comparison purposes. Uh, so just to keep it clear uh, for this go around, uh, the Speed 3, I currently have 100 miles on uh, running on the road. Uh, the Deviate Nitro 2, I'm up to 77 miles. Uh, the Rebel V3 is the newest of these shoes. I have 42 miles on those right now. And the Mach 5, I have 69 miles on. So my opinions here are not just based on this one mile on the track. I've used all of these shoes on the road in several different types of runs. Uh, shorter runs, longer runs, easy runs, tempo runs. I've run them all uh, in these shoes. So my, my opinions here are not just based on this one occurrence. I also do have longer reviews on my channel for each of these shoes. So if you wanna see uh, the full specs, the weights, you know, all the additional details about the shoe, you can click on each video that I have on my uh, site about each shoe where I give that. Today, I just kinda of wanna go over how this comparison went and how I feel these shoes match up in general with each other. So first up is the Speed 3. If you've watched any of my other videos on this channel about this shoe, uh, you'll know that the Speed 1 is one of my my favorite shoes of all time. I think it's the best, most comprehensive, all around great running shoe ever made. And this to me falls short of that. It's a better shoe as a daily trainer. It's a better shoe for long runs, but to me it just lacks the speed that that original model had. Uh, they've softened up this foam to make it kind of more compliant. The upper is also wider, so it's more accommodating if you have a wider foot. But I feel like they kind of turned this into like a luxury car from like a stripped down sports sedan. So that might work for some people. You know, it's more sturdy, it's more stable. Uh, but for me also being a bigger runner, I'm 6'4", 230 pounds. I think I just sink into this shoe a little bit too much, just lacks that pop for me. It's too flexible. So it's it's still a very good shoe. As far as daily trainers go, this is excellent. It's just not as fast as it used to be. I also had some concern about wear with this initially. I got this wear on the outsole around 50 miles, but I've now gone another 50 miles and nothing has really changed. So the rubber's holding up really well. I got a little bit of wear right there, but not really a concern. I also learned from this test that I'm not in as good shape as I was in the winter uh, the last time I did this. So I'm gonna work on getting back there. Uh, but I was still able to do a 627 mile in this shoe, which is not bad, uh, but with the DV8 Nitro, I was able to cut that down to 612. Um, this ended up being faster than the Rebel V3 and the Hoka Mach 5, but that was really just because I was done. Uh, after after I ran that uh, second mile, I, I just could feel I didn't have the stamina anymore, so I still put in uh, 631, 638 in the other two shoes, so kept it close to 630, but that was really more fatigue than the shoe's performance. Continuing to do this in the order that I ran in these shoes, I used the DV8 Nitro uh, 2 second and did a 612 mile in these. And these to me are the Goldilocks shoe of this bunch. They're just right. They just really hit all the boxes for me. I like the fit of the upper. It has that more narrow fit in the toe box and the instep that really hugs my foot and feels more like a racing fit than the Speed 3. Um, the foam in here is soft and bouncy, but it has that carbon composite plate, so it has a nice amount of pop and stiffness that you get from that plate that's lacking from the Speed 3, which makes it more explosive to me. It feels much more comfortable to run fast in, and this has the best outsole of this entire group. This uh, Puma grip, incredibly durable, grips onto everything. So this shoe to me is a fast shoe. You can use it as a daily trainer. It's very durable. You can use it as a tempo shoe. I would even say you could race in this shoe, but the only thing there is it's a little bit heavier than most of my race shoes, but I know that I could still do a good race 
just in the shoe, but I'm gonna skew towards those little bit lighter shoes when I'm trying to go my absolute top speed. But as far as overall versatility goes, this is the best of this four for sure, to me anyway. Now the Rebel V3 is like the exact same color as this shirt, so it's a good thing I don't have like a green screen behind me, I would disappear right now. Uh, but with this shoe, it really has the softest foam. Uh, New Balance Fuel Cell foam is really the softest and squishiest. This shoe is incredibly neutral, you can just twist it, turn it, do whatever you want to it. So this shoe is very uh, comfortable on foot. It also has a wider toe box like the Saucony shoe does, so it's very accommodating. It has a thin tongue, but it is gusseted and kind of just sits on top of your foot. That doesn't go anywhere. So this shoe's benefit is it's very light and springy. So you get some nice springy bounce from this shoe. Uh, but again, for me being a bigger, heavier runner, I tend to sink into fuel cell a little bit more than some of the other foams. But this one still is very light and nimble and it felt the fastest. Uh, I got the second highest top speed in this one, the Deviate Nitro. I had the fastest speed uh, when I was going for it at the beginning of the reps. This one was second fastest. Uh, but lacking that plate and being more tired towards the end of the run, I just didn't have, this wasn't giving me as much back as the EV8 Nitro uh, to be able to hold that speed for a longer period of time. Now, if I was just gonna run a short uh, short reps or start off just do one mile I think this probably would be faster than the v8 nitro but the fact that I did it later in the race when I was later in the race later in the test when I was more uh, tired I think really kind of hurt the performance of this one then with the Hoka Mach 5 this one had the uh, bad luck of being the last shoe that I ran in that day uh, one of the things I really like with this shoe is this dual density midsole I think works really well in this shoe it has that softer uh, squishier nitrogen infused foam on the top and then the EVA uh, rubberized EVA outsole so there's no rubber on the outsole I still am not really having bad wear on this it just has some scuffing but it's really not wearing down that badly uh, I have 70 miles on this shoe right now but having that dual density midsole as opposed to just the soft midsole that we have in the Rebel this one is completely flexible you're not getting any kind of resistance from the shoe whereas this one with that uh, firmer piece on the bottom you really do get some pop back from the shoe so this feels to me more propulsive uh, than the Rebel does. This shoe feels lighter, it feels a little bit more nimble, but when I was getting to the second half of the mile, this shoe was more comfortable because it felt like it was doing a little bit more to assist me with that roll and a little bit of snap from the shoe. In summary, these are four really excellent shoes. I don't think you're gonna go wrong with any of them, but it's really just a matter of what you need the shoe for, the type of runner that you are, what's gonna work best for you. I think if you have more of a narrow foot, you're definitely gonna get a better fit from the Hoka or from uh, the Puma. If you have a little bit of a wider foot, you're gonna do better with uh, the Saucony or the New Balance. These two both feel softer to me than the other two. These are the softer, kind of bouncier uh, midsole compositions, whereas these two have a little bit more firmness in there. This one from that rubberized outsole and this one from the plate where they're feeling like they're giving you a little bit more propulsion, a little bit more responsiveness. All four of these shoes can really handle any type of run that you throw at them, but I think this one skews more towards long runs. Uh, this one skews more towards fast sessions, shorter efforts, and these two are kind of more versatile overall. I feel like this is good at short, fast efforts, but I could also take it for longer runs. And then this one just wins overall as being the most versatile. Uh, this was the shoe I ran the fastest in, and I'd also feel the most comfortable in this one running up to a half marathon, uh, doing daily miles in. So I do enjoy these two shoes when I'm doing faster, quick sessions. They're a little bit lighter. If I'm running you know, three miles or less, these are a little bit more snappy than what I'm getting from the DV8 Nitro, but this one has that ability to just kind of soldier on. And with the outsole grip and durability, I think this is the best value of all the shoes because you can use it for everything and it's going to last the longest. So now I'm going to put all those shoes back in the crayon box and uh, move on to the next thing. Uh, so that's all I have for today. Uh, if you have any questions about these shoes, uh, feel free to reach out in the comments, uh, like and subscribe, and I will see you in the next video.